Bordering the northeastern stretch of the Gulf of Mexico is the state of Texas, another area that has seen its fair share of hurricane landfalls, though not quite as many as the areas we've covered previously. A total of 40 cyclones have made landfall here since 1950, 25 of them were tropical storms, 7 category 1 hurricanes, 2 category 2 storms, 3 category 3 hurricanes and 3 category 4 storms as well. The costliest storm to impact this region was Hurricane Ike in 2008, causing $19.3 billion in damages. The deadliest cyclone was Hurricane Rita, who caused 113 fatalities. Ike is the last storm to make landfall in Texas, though other systems like Hermine of 2010 have affected the region. In early September 1961, a tropical depression formed to the northwest of Colombia and two days later developed into tropical storm Carla, whilst making its closest approach to Nicaragua and Honduras. The storm continued northwest and attained hurricane intensity whilst heading towards the Yucatan Peninsula, though the storm then turned north and intensification continued as Carla veered around the tip of the peninsula. Now a Category 3 hurricane, Carla began to slowly progress through the Gulf of Mexico, continuing its northwest movement, and soon the storm started strengthening further, eventually becoming a Category 5 hurricane a day away from the coast of Texas. The storm began to weaken shortly before landfall, at which it did as a strong Category 4 hurricane. Carla then turned north and weakened inland. Carla made landfall with a strong storm surge of 10 feet or more near the landfall location. Sustained winds of 115 miles per hour or more also buffeted coastal areas, with gusts well into the Category 5 bracket near the point of landfall. Heavy rain also fell along the coast and further inland, with numerous locations reporting more than 10 inches, many with more than 15. As well as this, Carla spawned 26 tornadoes. All of these factors and characteristics caused damages of over $300 million and caused 34 fatalities in the state of Texas. In September 1967, a tropical depression formed on approach to the Lesser Antilles, and after passing just north of Barbados, the system slowed down in forward motion and became Tropical Storm Beulah shortly before moving over St. Lucia. After passing through the Lesser Antilles, Beulah continued to intensify, becoming a hurricane the next day, and a major hurricane the day after. Beulah then peaked as a Category 4 storm just southwest of Puerto Rico and paralleled the southern coast of the Dominican Republic until land interaction began to weaken the storm. Clipping the sudden tip of the island, Beulah continued to struggle and weakened further into a tropical storm as it began to pull away south of Haiti. The storm then moved towards the southwest, curving back towards the northwest as a tropical storm before intensification began once more. Moving through the western Caribbean, Beulah attained a secondary peak as a Category 3 hurricane and then weakened prior to landfalls in Cozumel and then the Yucatan Peninsula, which the storm passed over as a Category 2 hurricane. Moving into the Gulf of Mexico, Beulah deepened once more and attained a new peak intensity as a powerful Category 5 storm with a pressure in the low 920s as it approached the coast of Mexico. Moving towards the northwest, Beulah made landfall on the border between Mexico and Texas and quickly began to weaken as it moved inland, though still maintained hurricane intensity for nearly a day. The storm then turned towards the southwest and dissipated over northern Mexico. After causing heavy rain over many parts of the Caribbean and causing significant damage along the Yucatan Peninsula, Beulah passed through Texas with a 20-foot storm surge, accompanied by over 20 inches of rain in some areas inland, causing severe flooding in southern Texas. Along with this, Beulah spawned 115 tornadoes, which helped contribute to the final damage total of $1.41 billion in damages and up to 60 fatalities in the United States. On the last day of July 1970, a tropical depression formed in the Western Caribbean and proceeded towards the north-northwest, moving over westernmost Cuba before being named as Tropical Storm Celia in the southern Gulf of Mexico. The storm quickly intensified and became a Category 3 hurricane in a matter of hours. Celia then continued through the Gulf of Mexico, slowly weakening to a Category 1 storm before opting to re-intensify as it approached the coast of Texas. The storm struck as a Category 3 major hurricane and moved inland, remaining a tropical storm for another 24 hours. Celia caused severe damage in a landfall area, at which Celia struck with winds of 125 miles per hour and with higher gusts. Over 60,000 residences were damaged or destroyed by the storm, and damages amounted to $930 million. Tropical storm Alicia formed in August 1983, just a few hours after first becoming a tropical depression in the northern Gulf of Mexico. Moving slowly towards the west, Alicia gradually intensified into a hurricane and continued to intensify as it edged closer to the Texas coast, where it finally made landfall on August the 18th. Alicia then continued inland towards the northwest and soon became a remnant low.
A compact storm, Alicia packed a concentrated punch near the landfall area, causing heavy rains which led to flooding and numerous tornadoes, coupled with strong winds damaging or destroying 6,000 homes. In total, damages amounted to $2.5 billion and 21 fatalities occurred. In early June 2001, just a few days after the start of hurricane season, Tropical Storm Allison formed near the coast of Texas and soon moved inland where it weakened into a tropical depression less than a day later. Allison slowed down in forward motion and stalled for a day before moving slowly towards the southwest, then the south, then after a few days finally emerged back over water near where it initially made landfall. At this point, Allison turned subtropical and moved eastwards just offshore, and on June 11 made landfall in Louisiana. Accelerating now, Allison became a subtropical storm near New Orleans and continued northeastwards over Mississippi, Alabama and Georgia, eventually reaching the east coast of North Carolina where it again stalled and then turned north-northeast. Allison finally moved over open waters near Delmarva Peninsula and became a subtropical storm again for a short while before turning extra-tropical. Allison caused major flooding throughout Texas and Louisiana in particular, where rainfall totals exceeded 20 inches in a number of locations, with a peak amount of over 40 inches in Texas. The storm caused the worst of its flooding in the Houston area, and damages of over $6 billion were recorded across the state. A further $3 billion in damages were reported elsewhere. In all, there were also 55 fatalities, and Allison became the only tropical storm to ever have its name retired. In the middle of September 2005, a tropical depression formed to the east of the Turks and Caicos Islands and passed Grand Turk just to the north, shortly before being named Tropical Storm Rita. The cyclone then continued through the southern Bahamas and became a hurricane as it began to pass through the Florida Strait. The hurricane continued to intensify without relenting and attained Category 5 intensity in the central Gulf of Mexico, peaking with sustained winds of 180 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 895 millibars. Rita then continued towards the northwest as a Category 4 hurricane before weakening a little more prior to its landfall as a 115 mile per hour Category 3 storm near the border with Louisiana and Texas. In Texas, Hurricane Rita caused widespread power outages and serious wind damage near the landfall area, not to mention severe flooding along the coast which contributed to heavy damages and 113 fatalities to go with the seven others reported elsewhere. In total, Rita caused $12 billion in damages. On the first day of September 2008, a tropical depression formed in the Atlantic Ocean and developed into Tropical Storm Ike before the day concluded. Tracking west-northwestwards as a tropical storm, Ike continued not to threaten any land areas for a while as it intensified, soon reaching its peak as a Category 4 storm. After this, Ike began to turn towards the west and then the southwest whilst gradually weakening, bottoming out as a Category 2 storm north of Puerto Rico. Ike then began to approach the Turks and Caicos Islands, which it passed at its secondary peak intensity as a Category 4 hurricane, and then weakened once more before producing another burst of intensification just before making landfall in Cuba, which it did as a Category 4 hurricane. Ike weakened over land and then paralleled the southern coast of Cuba as a Category 1 storm before making another landfall near the western end of the island. Ike then proceeded into the Gulf of Mexico and intensified into a Category 2 hurricane once it cleared land, an intensity it maintained until its final landfall in Texas. When Ike made landfall in Texas, it caused severe and widespread damage due to its storm surge and sustained winds of 110 miles per hour. Severe flooding occurred along the coast near the point of landfall due to a storm surge of over 20 feet. In the state of Texas, there were 84 fatalities and over $19 billion in damages.
Most of the southern coast of the Gulf of Mexico belongs to Mexico itself. Consisting of the provinces of Tomaulipas, Veracruz, Tabasco and Campeche, this region also sees a fair amount of storms, though the stronger hurricanes tend to make landfall further north, towards the border with Texas. 48 cyclones have made landfall in this region since 1950, 20 of them making landfall as a tropical storm, 14 Category 1 hurricanes, 6 Category 2 storms, 6 Category 3 hurricanes, 1 Category 4 storm and 2 powerful Category 5 hurricanes. The costliest cyclone to make landfall was Hurricane Carl in 2010, causing $5.6 billion in damages, and the deadliest storm was Hurricane Beulah in 1967, causing 630 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Hurricane Ingrid this year. A tropical depression formed in the central Gulf of Mexico near the end of August 1977 and proceeded slowly towards the west-southwest, where it gradually intensified, becoming Tropical Storm Anita the next day and a hurricane shortly afterwards. Anita continued towards the west-southwest, intensifying more rapidly as it neared the coast of Mexico, peaking as a Category 5 storm with winds of 175 miles per hour, at which it made landfall at that intensity. Anita moved inland and began to accelerate towards the west-southwest and entered the eastern Pacific as a weakening tropical depression. In Mexico, where Anita made landfall, 15 inches of rain caused significant damage in what was a sparsely populated region with winds of over 100 miles per hour and much higher gusts. Rainfall also contributed to landslides and power outages. Anita caused 11 fatalities in Mexico. In early August 1990, a tropical depression formed in the southwestern Caribbean Sea to the east of Nicaragua. The system moved towards the northwest and became Tropical Storm Diana the next day whilst making its closest approach to Nicaragua and Honduras just off to the northeast. The storm then continued on to make landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula. Maintaining tropical storm intensity, Diana gradually curved towards the west and entered the southern Gulf of Mexico, where it moved almost due west, attaining hurricane status a day away from its final landfall in Mexico, which it did so at its peak intensity as a 100 mile per hour Category 2 storm. Diana then moved inland and weakened into a tropical depression, dissipating completely just as it entered the eastern Pacific. Diana caused heavy rain near the landfall area, particularly just north of the storm's track as it moved into Mexico for the second time where over 15 inches of rain fell. This contributed to mudslides and flooding causing significant damage that amounted to over $90 million and left 139 fatalities in its wake. On the first day of October 2005, a tropical depression formed in the Caribbean Sea on approach to the Yucatan Peninsula where it made landfall the next day, just after being classified as Tropical Storm Stan. Stan moved inland and weakened briefly to a tropical depression before regaining tropical storm intensity as it moved back out into the Bay of Campeche. The storm continued towards the west-southwest, eventually becoming a hurricane not long before its second landfall in Mexico, this time in the state of Veracruz, and had weakened into a tropical depression by the next day. Stan caused widespread and severe rainfall over the region with $2 billion of damages in Mexico where the storm made landfall. However, in Guatemala and El Salvador, the human cost of the storm was significantly worse, with whole communities destroyed or cut off from landslides and flooding. Mexico reported around 80 fatalities, though in other nations, like ones already mentioned, there totaled well over 1,500 fatalities, and Stan caused an all-round total cost of nearly $4 billion. Near the end of June 2010, a tropical depression formed to the northeast of Honduras and paralleled the coast for a while, becoming Tropical Storm Alex along the way. Alex then moved into Belize as a tropical storm and held on to tropical storm intensity as it crossed the Yucatan Peninsula, moving slowly as it emerged into the Bay of Campeche. After moving north for a short time, Alex curved back towards the northwest and intensified into a hurricane as it began to approach northern Mexico. The storm then peaked just before landfall as a strong Category 2 storm with a central air pressure of 946 millibars, the lowest pressure from a Category 2 hurricane, until Sandy eclipsed that record two years later. Hurricane Alex caused significant damage in northern Mexico, affecting half a million people with power outages and flooding, peaking at over 25 inches in some interior regions of northern Mexico. In all, Alex caused 73 fatalities and nearly $2 billion in damages. The Yucatan Peninsula separates the southern Gulf of Mexico from the Caribbean Sea. Most of the peninsula is part of Mexico, though a part of the southeast is occupied by Belize. Its location makes it fairly vulnerable to strong hurricanes that intensify over the Caribbean. 
44 cyclones have made landfall here since 1950, 21 of them being tropical storms, 4 as a Category 1 hurricane, 6 Category 2 storms, 3 major Category 3 hurricanes, 7 Category 4 storms and 3 intense Category 5 hurricanes. The costliest cyclone in this region is Hurricane Keith, which caused $280 million in damages. The deadliest storm was Hattie in 1961, causing 307 fatalities. The last storm to make landfall here was Hurricane Ernesto last year. In September 1955, Tropical Storm Janet was first detected on approach to Barbados and after a quick intensification, Janet passed the island as a Category 3 major hurricane before moving through the Windward Islands at a similar intensity. After weakening for a spell, Janet began to build in intensity for a second time, becoming a Category 4 storm north of Venezuela and maintained this intensity as it pushed west-northwestwards. Janet attained Category 5 intensity to the northeast of Honduras, peaking with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a minimal central pressure of at least 914 millibars, or perhaps lower. The hurricane made landfall in Belize at its peak intensity and then weakened over land, emerging into the Bay of Campeche as a Category 2 storm, making its final landfall in Mexico at the same intensity. Janet quickly weakened inland and dissipated over Mexico. Janet brought borderline Category 3 hurricane conditions to Barbados, causing $5 million in damages and 38 fatalities. A further 122 occurred on the Grenadines and 10 on Tobago. A Hurricane Hunter Reconnaissance aircraft also crashed after entering the eye wall of the intense hurricane, remaining the only such instance to ever occur in the Atlantic. Near the point of landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula, almost all buildings were destroyed, and throughout the landfall regions of Belize and Mexico, 948 fatalities were reported, over 300 of those from Janet's final landfall. Total damages amounted to nearly $66 million. In late August 1974, a tropical depression formed as it approached the Leeward Islands, passing just north of Guadeloupe. As it passed south of Puerto Rico, the depression intensified into Tropical Storm Carmen and proceeded on an almost precise due west heading until passing Jamaica as a Category 1 hurricane when it began to move slightly north of west. Carmen continued to intensify and peaked as a Category 4 storm with winds of 150 miles per hour shortly before landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula. The hurricane quickly weakened and emerged on the other side as a slow-moving tropical storm. Continuing a very slow northward heading, Carmen became a hurricane again as it began to pull away from the northwestern tip of the Yucatan Peninsula and gathered pace as it moved through the Gulf of Mexico. Carmen also gathered intensity here too, and peaked again as a strong Category 4 storm before landfall in Louisiana. The storm weakened once more and dissipated over Texas. Hurricane Carmen made landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula, causing heavy rainfall and strong winds near the point of landfall. Four were reported dead, with a damage total of $10 million. During Carmen's final landfall on the US Gulf Coast, heavy rains occurred, particularly towards the east, causing two fatalities and over $150 million in damages, a large part of that being agricultural losses. In September 1988, a tropical depression formed on approach to the Lesser Antilles and had strengthened into Tropical Storm Gilbert the next day, whilst located just east of Martinique. After moving over the island, Gilbert began to intensify, attaining hurricane intensity to the south of Puerto Rico and major hurricane intensity the next day whilst located south of Hispaniola. The storm then made landfall in Jamaica as a Category 3 storm and continued to intensify once leaving to the island's west. Gilbert passed the Cayman Islands as a strong Category 4 storm and whilst approaching the Yucatan Peninsula, Gilbert peaked as a powerful Category 5 storm with winds of 185 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 888 millibars, the lowest Atlantic hurricane air pressure ever recorded at the time. Gilbert made landfalls on Cozumel and then on the peninsula itself, both as a Category 5 storm. Gilbert weakened over the Gulf of Mexico for a while before intensifying to reach a secondary peak as a Category 4 hurricane where it made landfall in northern Mexico. The storm then weakened and turned towards the northeast, finally becoming a remnant low over Missouri. In the Yucatan Peninsula, where Gilbert made its strongest landfall, rainfall totals of over 10 inches occurred and a significant storm surge caused major beach erosion and damage to buildings along the coast, which were also being battered by winds gusting into Category 5 intensity. In the whole of Mexico, 202 fatalities occurred and $2 billion of damage also occurred. A tropical depression formed just off the coast of Central America near the border between Nicaragua and Honduras in late September 2000. The next day, Tropical Storm Keith was named as it moved northwestwards through the Western Caribbean and began to aim for the coast of Belize. Keith then began to strengthen rapidly at one point and peaked as a strong Category 4 hurricane with sustained winds of 140 mph before beginning to weaken as land interaction began to occur. 
Keith Stoll, just off the coast of Belize, where it continued to weaken into a Category 1 hurricane as it made three landfalls along the coast, before finally weakening into a tropical depression as it accelerated towards the west inland. Tropical Depression Keith moved out over the Bay of Campeche where it regained tropical storm intensity and then continued on to make landfall in northern Mexico as a Category 1 storm. Keith caused heavy and prolonged rainfall near the landfall area, totalling more than 30 inches in Belize. Strong winds of Category 3 intensity and a sizeable storm surge also resulted in Belize and on its offshore islands. In all, Keith caused 62 fatalities. 23 in Mexico, 19 in Belize, and the rest in other parts of Central America. In total, the storm caused $320 million in damages. In mid-September 2002, a tropical depression formed near Trinidad and Tobago and moved into Venezuela before becoming a remnant low just offshore. After nearly two days, the depression reformed to the south of Jamaica and became tropical storm Isidore as it approached the western half of the island, which it passed just offshore. Isidore continued towards the northwest, passing the Cayman Islands and intensifying into a hurricane as it approached Cuba. The storm passed the Isle of Youth with winds of over 100 miles per hour and made landfall in extreme western Cuba as a Category 1 hurricane. Isidore then began to intensify once more along the southern fringe of the Gulf of Mexico, where the storm peaked as a Category 3 major hurricane, the intensity it held until landfall on the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Isidore weakened over land and turned back on itself and back to the north, where it continued almost directly northwards for a number of days before making a final landfall in Louisiana. Isidore caused very high amounts of rainfall over parts of the Yucatan Peninsula, especially towards the west where totals exceeded 30 inches in some areas. Along with this, a storm surge of 20 feet and wind speeds of up to 125 miles per hour destroyed tens of thousands of buildings in the region and resulted in the deaths of 17 people. Heavy rain also fell in the United States, over 15 inches in some areas, and five further fatalities occurred here. In all, damages amounted to $1.3 billion, three quarters of it in Mexico. In mid-October 2005, a tropical depression formed just off the coast of western Jamaica and drifted towards the west. Shortly after turning towards the south, the system developed into tropical storm Wilma and continued slowly towards the south for a time and then reverted to a westerly heading once more as it developed into a hurricane. Wilma continued towards the west and began an explosive bout of intensification, becoming the strongest Atlantic hurricane on record by the next day, as a Category 5 storm with winds of 185 miles per hour and a central air pressure of 882 millibars. Wilma held on to Category 5 intensity for 18 hours before falling below that threshold, however the hurricane resumed at Category 4 intensity for nearly three more days until making landfalls in Cozumel and then the Yucatan Peninsula itself. Wilma did not move far inland, but weakened into a Category 2 hurricane as it turned towards the northeast and entered the Gulf of Mexico. Wilma continued in this fashion as it approached Florida, strengthening again to make landfall as a Category 3 storm, weakening once more over land but regaining its strength as it moved back out to sea, where the storm accelerated at around 50 miles per hour, one of the fastest moving hurricanes to be observed. In Mexico, Wilma struck with sustained winds of up to 150 miles per hour, causing extremely heavy rainfall in parts of the Yucatan Peninsula, as well as widespread disruption to electricity and communications in the region. In total, there were eight fatalities here, and damages of $7.5 billion. In mid-August 2007, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Atlantic to the southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. The next day, the system developed into Tropical Storm Dean and continued westwards through the Central Atlantic. Dean then approached the Lesser Antilles as a gradually strengthening hurricane and passed just south of Martinique as a Category 2 storm. Upon entering the Eastern Caribbean, Dean intensified more quickly and reached its first peak as a Category 5 hurricane with sustained winds of 165 miles per hour. The storm continued towards the northwest where it weakened slightly and passed very close to Jamaica as a Category 4 storm. Moving through the Western Caribbean, Dean re-intensified into a Category 5 hurricane where it peaked with sustained winds of 175 miles per hour and a central pressure of 905 millibars. Shortly afterwards, Dean made landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula and weakened into a Category 1 hurricane by the time it entered into the Bay of Compassion. Dean continued throughout the southern Gulf of Mexico and made landfall in Vera Cruz as a Category 1 storm. Both of the Mexican landfalls caused significant effects to the country, mainly due to rainfall which caused a number of landslides, as well as its strong winds, particularly for its first landfall, which proved to be the most damaging. However, with all of the fatalities occurring as a result of Dean's final landfall, this landfall was the deadliest. In total, Dean caused $184 million in damages.
dividing the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans is Central America, consisting of Guatemala, Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama on the Atlantic side. Like the Yucatan Peninsula, this region has also seen a number of strong and devastating hurricanes over the years. Though only 18 storms have made landfall since 1950, which is considerably less than other areas. Nine of them were tropical storms, four Category 1 hurricanes, one Category 2 storm, a single Category 3 hurricane, one Category 4 storm, and two Category 5 hurricanes. The costliest storm to strike this area was Hurricane Mitch in 1998, with damages of $6 billion. Mitch was also the deadliest storm anywhere in the Atlantic in over 200 years, resulting in 18,678 fatalities in this region alone. The last storm to affect this region was Tropical Storm Matthew in 2010. In late August 1969, a tropical depression formed over the southern Windward Islands near the South American continent and proceeded through the southeastern Caribbean. The depression became Tropical Storm Franchilia as it passed through the central part of the Caribbean Sea and continued in this fashion for two days before becoming a hurricane up to the northeast of Honduras. Franchilia began to intensify further whilst located near the coast of Honduras and developed into a Category 3 storm as it paralleled fairly close to the coast. Despite this, Franchilia continued as a Category 2 storm very close to land before making landfall in Belize the next day at this intensity. Franchilia quickly weakened over land and dissipated. The storm caused fairly strong winds, but heavy rains were the main feature during the storm's landfall, amounting over 7 inches in parts of Guatemala and Belize, and significant flooding occurred. Franchilia caused nearly $5 million in damages, mainly agricultural, and at least 100 fatalities also resulted. In November that same year, a short-lived but unusual hurricane formed in the southwestern Caribbean at an unusually low latitude. Quickly named Martha, the tropical storm soon developed into a hurricane and the next day weakened again as it drifted ever closer to the coast of Panama where it finally made landfall on November 24th. The storm caused over 12 inches of rainfall over parts of Panama causing flooding in towns and cities. There were 5 fatalities and $30 million in damages from what remains the only tropical storm to ever make landfall in Panama. A tropical depression formed to the southeast of Barbados two years later in September 1971. The system continued into the Southern Caribbean, not far from the coast of Venezuela, and was named Edith near the ABC Islands. Once clearing South America, Edith became a hurricane and continued just north of west and approached Central America. Edith continued to strengthen without interruption and became a Category 5 hurricane shortly before landfall in Nicaragua. The storm continued inland, crossing into Honduras and back out to sea as a much weakened Category 1 storm the next day. Edith then made landfall in Belize as a tropical storm and moved over the Yucatan Peninsula. The storm then moved through the Gulf of Mexico, still as a tropical storm, stalled near the coast of northern Mexico and then headed northeastwards with a secondary peak as a Category 2 hurricane as it made landfall in Louisiana. Edith weakened from here and finally dissipated over Georgia. When Edith made landfall in Central America, sustained winds near the landfall area were estimated to be of at least Category 4 intensity and heavy damage occurred here. There were thought to be at least 35 fatalities and damages of around $400,000. However, during the storm's final landfall in the United States, more damages occurred, amounting to $25 million, most of it in Louisiana. In mid-September 1974, a tropical depression formed in the eastern Caribbean and continued towards the west-northwest, passing to the south of Hispaniola and Jamaica, at which point the system became Tropical Storm Fifi. Fifi continued towards the west, becoming a hurricane between Jamaica and Central America. The storm peaked as a strong Category 2 hurricane as it approached Honduras before tracking just north of the coast all the way to its landfall in Belize, still as a Category 2 storm. Fifi weakened over land but remained a tropical depression as it entered the eastern Pacific where it merged with Tropical Storm Orlean. Honduras endured two days of hurricane conditions somewhere along its coastline and torrential rain throughout the country caused numerous mudslides and severe flooding, causing the complete destruction of several towns and villages and possibly as many as 10,000 fatalities in the country. Along with this were damages of $1.8 billion. At least 210 others were killed in Guatemala and El Salvador, while similar though less devastating conditions occurred here. In July 1996, a tropical storm formed near the Windward Islands and tracked close to Venezuela, becoming tropical storm Cesar shortly before making landfall on Curaçao. The storm also grazed the northern tip of Colombia before moving over the southern Caribbean waters, where Cesar became a hurricane. The next day, Cesar made landfall in Nicaragua as a minimal hurricane and passed through to the eastern Pacific as a tropical storm, where it was named Douglas. In Nicaragua, over 10 inches of rain fell, causing mudslides and overflowing rivers in Central America, mainly in Nicaragua, Costa Rica and El Salvador. 
In total, the storm caused 113 fatalities and over $200 million in damages. In October 1998, a tropical depression formed to the west of Colombia and was soon named Tropical Storm Mitch the next day. Mitch then moved towards the north, soon attaining hurricane intensity and gradually strengthening as it curved towards the west, eventually becoming a Category 5 hurricane to the northeast of Honduras. The storm continued westward, slowing down in forward motion as it peaked with sustained winds of 180 miles per hour and a central pressure of 905 millibars. After maintaining its Category 5 intensity for two days, Mitch finally began to weaken as it drew close to the coast of Honduras. It took the best part of two days for the storm to make landfall once it lost Category 5 intensity, and Mitch finally did so as a weakening Category 1 hurricane. Mitch then continued to weaken over Honduras but still moved slowly at first, then headed westwards through Guatemala and finally Mexico. Mitch dissipated for a while and its remnants entered the Bay of Campeche where the storm reformed and made landfall on the western coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. Mitch briefly weakened to a tropical depression over land but regained tropical storm intensity once more after emerging over waters. Mitch finally made landfall in Florida and turned post-tropical as it moved over the open Atlantic near the Bahamas. Due to Mitch's slow movement near and over Central America, the monetary and human cost of the storm was virtually unparalleled in this region. Honduras bore the brunt of the storm where historic landslides and flooding occurred across the whole country. The country's transport system was largely destroyed and a third of all the nation's buildings were washed out by floods. One and a half million of the estimated population of 7.5 million at the time were left homeless. Damage on such a scale was echoed in neighbouring Nicaragua where nearly 400,000 people were displaced as over 40,000 homes were damaged or completely destroyed. Similar conditions occurred in parts of other nations such as Guatemala, El Salvador, Costa Rica and even Panama. In all, Mitch caused over 19,000 fatalities and over $6 billion in damages, the deadliest Atlantic hurricane recorded in the modern observation period, and the second deadliest ever recorded in the Atlantic Basin. On the last day of August 2007, a tropical depression formed to the southeast of Barbados and developed into Tropical Storm Felix the next day, whilst making its closest approach to the island. The storm passed through the Windward Islands and maintained a low latitude as it continued towards the west, attaining hurricane status and then major hurricane status as it passed the coasts of Venezuela and Colombia. Felix attained Category 5 intensity as it moved over more open waters and weakened the next day. However, shortly before landfall in Nicaragua, Felix re-attained Category 5 intensity once more and moved over land with sustained winds of 160 miles per hour. Near the landfall area, Felix caused severe wind damage and flooding, destroying at least 9,000 homes and affecting 40,000 residents. In total, the hurricane caused 133 fatalities and damages amounting to $720 million. Most, if not all, of the fatalities occurred in Nicaragua where the storm made landfall.